Brother Mike, you come ahead and just give us what God's laid on your heart. Thank you. I appreciate that. All right. Well, you already met my wife and daughter. I have four other kids. <clears throat> One um, is 25 and, uh, Lord willing, hopefully be, uh, be getting married here uh, before too long. And then I have a son up at Fort Wainwright in the Army in Alaska, uh, Fairbanks, Alaska. Uh, he's 23, and I have a daughter, 21, and a son, 19, and uh, they're at uh, Fairhaven Baptist College, and so I uh, appreciate, uh, you know, uh, being able to be here. Thank you for letting us stay over at the house for the food. Thank you for the expense check. Appreciate that very much. Y'all being kind to us. Um, <clears throat> I'm sure that uh, I don't want to bore you with a bunch of things, so please, if after the service, you know, anybody has any questions, wants to get to know us a little better, anything like that, please feel free just to ask me anything. If I don't have an answer, you know what I'm going to say? I don't know. <laughs> I'm not too proud to say I don't know. So uh, if you ask me a hard question, I might not be able to give you a, a good answer. But uh, otherwise, I'll uh, be more than happy to tell you anything uh, about us that you'd like to know. I'll just say this. <clears throat> I thank God that he saved me at a young age. I thank God that he called me to preach. Uh, I thank God that he allowed me to be married to my wife for 26 years. Uh, God's been good to us, and I, and I thank God for that. Take your Bibles, turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 15. 1 Corinthians chapter number 15. Let's stand together. Let's stand together and read verse number 1 down through verse number 11. 1 Corinthians 15, verse number 1. <clears throat> the Bible says, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, that He was buried and that He rose again the third day according to the Scriptures, and that He was seen of Cephas, then of the twelve. After that He was seen above five hundred brethren at once, of whom the greater part remain unto this present, but some are fallen asleep. After that He was seen of James, then of all the apostles. And last of all was seen of me also as of one born out of due time. These next few verses are the key ones today. For I am the least of the apostles, that I am not meet to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God I am what I am, and His grace which was bestowed upon me was not in vain. But I labored more abundantly than they all, yet not I, but the grace of God which was with me. Therefore, whether it were I or they, so we preach, and so ye believed. Father, thank you for the opportunity to open the pages of your word. Please speak to our hearts. Bless the service today. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. You may be seated. I want to take a little bit of time and look at this thing of God's grace. <clears throat> Apostle Paul, I, I can't imagine what it would have been like for him. Here's Apostle Paul in his life, and he was just serving God, quote unquote, to the best of his ability in what he knew. Now, you and I know that before he was Apostle Paul, he was doing what he thought was right, but what he was doing was not right. I mean, he was very zealous for the law. He was very, the Bible calls him a Pharisee. Uh, he was, I mean, just as strict as could be, had everything down pat, uh, had orders from the high priest. I mean, just, just doing the best that he knew in his mind to serve God. All right, that's what he was doing. But the problem was he was a lost man, and what he was doing was wrong. But he was so zealous in that that he was taking Christians, and some of them he killed. In fact, uh, we find out that, that he's the one that gave the uh, okay for them to stone Stephen. And so here he is, he's going along in life, and he's doing all these things, and he's throwing Christians in prison, and he's, and he's uh, making havoc of the church and doing all these. And then all of a sudden, one day, God, uh, he was on the road to Damascus, and, and God uh, shone, shined a light down on him and knocked him off of his beast, and he's on the ground, and all these people were laying on the ground, and then God said, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? And somewhere in between him saying, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? And him saying uh, something to the effect of, uh, Lord, you know, how can I serve you? Somewhere in there, Paul got saved. All right? We don't have the exact details in there, but, the, but he got born again, if you want to put it that way. He was converted. He was redeemed. And so here you have Apostle Paul living uh, his life, and he's looking back on his life now and understanding I'm the least of the apostles. 
Uh, he was see Jesus Christ was seen of him last, all these things. And he looks back and he says, you know, I still remember what I used to be back here. I still remember what I did back here. I still remember, I can just imagine uh, being Apostle Paul and being haunted by the thought of stoning Stephen. Taking moms away from their children, taking dads, casting Christians into, uh, casting Christians into uh, jail. Imagine what it would be like. And so he's sitting there and he's thinking, this is what I am. And so he makes this statement in verse number 10, but by the grace of God, I am what I am. And, you know, you stop and think about that. I don't know your past in here. I don't know what all you've done in, in your past life, but I do know this. Whatever it was back here and you are where you are today, you're here because of the grace of God. That's why you're here. I don't know what you did over here. I don't really care what you did over here. But the fact is, you, look, you, know, you can go back in your mind and you can sit there and think that I did this and I did this and there's no way God could use me. I've, I've participated in this activity and no way God can use me. I went over here and I did this. There's no way God can use me. And I'm going to tell you that it's not about you and it's not about me. It's about God. It's about Jesus Christ and what he's done. And so when you look at your past, what you used to be, and now you look at where you are today, you can say like Apostle Paul, I am what I am, but it's by the grace of God. It's the grace of God that I'm standing where I'm standing today. It's the grace of God that I've been married 26 years. It's the grace of God I have the children I have. It's the grace of God that He allows me to serve Him. It's the grace of God. Listen, by God's grace I was saved, and by God's grace I live. I mean, it's just as simple as that. I am what I am, and it's all because of the grace of God. Verse number 10, again, he says, but by the grace of God. Imagine what it would be like. I don't know about you, but have you ever laid in bed some nights and you just can recall almost exactly word for word every detail of something that you did that was bad? I mean, I've laid there before and just look at the ceiling and I'm thinking, oh, why am I reliving this? <laughs> well, that's where Apostle Paul's at. He says, man, I'm the, I'm the least of the apostles. I'm not even meet to be called an apostle. And he says in verse 9, nine he says, because I persecuted the church of God. He says, man, I was the one that was persecuting them. And now he's preaching the gospel to them. Imagine what that would be like. But I know this, that every time I lay in that bed and I sit there and I look up and I remember all those things, the Lord Jesus Christ reminds me, hey, it's under the blood. You know what? You've been forgiven of that. You are where you are today, not because you've been a good person, not because you've done something great and heroic for, for the cause of Christ, but I'm here where I am today, and it's only because of the grace of God. God's unmerited favor. Think about the grace of God. Hold your place here. We're going to come back to it. But let's think about it. I am what I am. Look in Ephesians chapter number 1. In Ephesians chapter number 1 and verse number 7. Let's look at some verses here real quick uh, dealing with this subject. In Ephesians chapter 1, verse number 7, the Bible says, In whom we have redemption, through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. Praise God for his grace. Think about this. Through his blood, because of his grace, I have forgiveness of sins. I'm sitting here today forgiven, not because of anything that I deserve, not because of anything I've done, but because of the grace of God. Think about that. Apostle Paul says, I am what I am. And you are what you are because of the grace of God. Think about the forgiveness that you have. Have you ever walked up to somebody and, and said, uh, would you please forgive me and have them say no? That hurts, doesn't it? But do you know when I say, God, would you forgive me? Already done. <laughs> already done. That is our God. Now you think about that for a minute. It says, in whom we have redemption, through his blood. I've been bought by the blood of Christ. I have forgiveness of sins, and it is because of the richness of his grace. I do not deserve for Jesus Christ to buy me. I do not deserve that he died on the cross. I do not deserve that his blood was spilt for me. I do not deserve for him to forgive me of anything that I've ever done, but because he has grace and he is rich in his grace, I am what I am. Ephesians chapter 2 and verse number 8, the Bible says, For by grace are ye saved through faith, 
and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. And just like I was talking to one of the brothers a little bit ago, for we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. And, and I praise God, you shared that verse, Ephesians 2, chapter 2, verse 10. But it's by God's grace. That's where we are today. I am what I am because of the grace of God. I'm saved. And because of that, it's the grace of God. I'm serving him today. And it's because of the grace of God. My life has been changed. It's all because of God's grace. I don't deserve any of it. Not one of these things do I deserve. In Titus chapter number 3, in verse number 7, if you would, Titus chapter number 3 in verse number 7. I'm not sure what all you're used to, but I enjoy taking the Bible. I enjoy turning to all the pages in the Bible. I would encourage you to always have your Bible with you. Always follow along. Because listen, it doesn't really matter ultimately what I have to say. It really ultimately matters what God has to say. All right, so you take the word of God, and, and uh, I'm, I'm one of these, listen, I know that they, they probably teach in Bible college, you know, you only use a few verses, and you don't have people, and that's not me, that's not my style. I like the word of God, I like looking up verses, I like backing up all the things. So that's what we're going to do. All right, so Titus chapter number 3, verse number 7, the Bible says this, that being justified by his grace, we should be made heirs according to the hope of eternal life. Isn't that exciting? If you go back to verse number 5, he says, Not by works of righteousness which we've done, but according to his mercy he saved us, by the washing of regeneration and the renewing of the Holy Ghost, which he shed us abundantly through Jesus Christ our Savior. Why? That being justified by his grace, we should be made heirs. Listen, I might not have had a great family background, but I know what my family is now, and I'm an heir with Christ Jesus. I'm an heir of God. You might not have a whole lot in this life, but look what's waiting for you. I'm going to tell you, uh, you want to know the difference between mercy and grace. And, and again, like I said during Sunday school, I just like things simple. But mercy is, is not getting what we do deserve. And grace is getting, getting what we don't deserve. And so by the mercy of God, I miss hell. And by the grace of God, I get to go to heaven. Man, that's some great things. I am what I am, but it's by the grace of God. I am what I am. Look over in 2 Peter chapter number 3. In 2 Peter chapter number 3, the Bible tells us in verse number 18, I can remember years ago as a teenager, one of the first verses that I ever was able to learn, and I, could, I don't know why this one popped out so much, but in 2 Peter chapter 3 verse 18 it says, But grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To Him be glory both now and forever. Amen. You know what we ought to do? Not be satisfied where we are right now, but we need to grow in grace doesn't mean that we're going to get more of the grace of God as far as we're going to get more saved. That's impossible. You're saved, you're saved. But the fact is, I need to grow in the Lord. I need to, 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 to further myself and, and to be... Listen, anybody in here that has a little baby, you don't want that little baby to stay a baby forever. I mean, it might be so cute when they're sitting there and they're, they're sleeping and you're like, oh, that's so precious. But when they fill that diaper, I don't think you enjoy that as much. You know, I don't think you want them to be 18 years old and still changing their diaper and burping them, do you? <laughs> what do you do? You, we, we take those children and we, 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 we encourage them. Say, dad, dad. Say, dad, dad. And then when they start talking, be quiet. Be quiet. But you know how that goes. And so we get them and we start training them. And we want them to start walking. And we're like, come here. Come here. And they, uh, 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 and they bump their heads and they fall down and they cry and they hit the of the end table and all those things that happen and then they get a little older and they come running, running in because they've skinned up their knee they've skinned up their elbow you know they've crashed their bike and they get a little older and a little older. what are we doing we want them to grow and grow and grow and look forward to that time to where they they they're released from the nest and they go out into the wild blue yonder why because that's the thing that happens in life babies grow up and become adults God expects the same thing from us. He says, now that you're saved, you need to grow in that grace. You need to learn. You need to, to, to get up on your own two feet and begin to walk and, and begin to trust me and all those things. Grow. But I'm going to tell you, it doesn't matter how much you grow. It doesn't matter if your brother Houston has been preaching for 32 years. He would say the same thing that I'm going to say. I am what I am by the grace of God. I am what I am. It's God's grace. Back to 1 Corinthians chapter number 15. He says there in verse number 10, 15 and verse 10, he says, But by the grace of God, I am what I am. 
Then he goes on and he makes this statement. He says, and his grace, which was bestowed upon me, was not in vain. In other words, he says, the grace that God gave me, it wasn't in vain. It wasn't empty. You know, there, we didn't just get saved to sit. All right? I mean, let's just be honest about this. Uh, you know, some people grow faster than other people. Some people are more excited than other people. Some people do things more than other. I understand that we're all at different levels. We all have different personalities. We all have different likes. We all have different dislikes. I understand all that. That all being set aside for a minute, God did not intend for us to be saved and then stagnate and sit. That's not what God intended for us. What God intended for us is not to take the grace that he's given us and just have it be in vain. Apostle Paul says, the grace that God has given to me, this is what I did. Verse number 10, I labored more abundantly than they all. He got excited about serving God and went out there and got to work. Now listen, you sit there and you say, well, I don't know how to do this. I don't know how to. Then learn. Grow in grace. You say, but I'm scared. So is everybody else when they first start. Some people are natural speakers. Some people aren't. Some people naturally can go up and knock on the door. Some people naturally can't. But I'm going to tell you, it is our job then to begin to labor. You know, my dad, uh, you know, is, is the kind of person, you know, he, he's, he can't sing a lick. He's not good at talking. He's not good at those things. But what he can do, he does for God. You know, what he can do, that's what he does. And I sit there and I look at that, and, and for, for many years I would think, Man, Dad, come on. Come on, Dad, come on. Come on, let's go. You know, and I just finally had to place it. It's like, you know what? He's not going to be able to do what somebody else does, but he can do what he can do. And I realized that one day, and I'm like, well, that's stupid. Why have I been pushing somebody to do something here when that's not his personality? Well, the fact is this. We need to labor. And he says here in, in this verse, he says, I labored more abundantly. So he goes, I am what I am by the grace of God. But understand this, because of his grace, I'm laboring more abundantly. Again, it's because of the grace of God. I'm not saying that you need to labor because you're a good person. Because you're not a good person and neither am I. We are what we are because of the grace of God. I'm not saying you should labor because you want to pat yourself on the back. Because that's just pride, right? I'm not saying that you should labor to, uh, to show somebody else up. Because we're not supposed to compare ourselves among ourselves. That's unwise. I'm not saying that you should uh, labor so that you could build a name for yourself. Because, you know, we live in a society that everything's about self-esteem. And I'm going to tell you, the Bible doesn't teach anything about self-esteem. If anything, it says we ought to live humbly. All right? We're full of pride. I am saying this. I have a responsibility to labor for God because of what he's done for me. Now, I'm not saying that you're working your way to heaven, all right? That's not what I'm saying. What I am saying is you're serving God because he is taking you to heaven. There's a difference. So by the grace of God, I am what I am. But can, can I say this? By the grace of God, I'm going to labor more abundantly. I'm going to labor more abundantly. Let me show you a couple of verses. 2 Corinthians chapter number 9. In 2 Corinthians chapter number 9, 2 Corinthians chapter 9, look in verse number 8. In 2 Corinthians 9 and verse 8, the Bible says this, And God is, aren't you glad for those three words? <laughs> God is able. And God is able to make all grace abound toward you, that ye always, having all sufficiency in all things, may abound to every good work. You know what God is saying? He says, I'm going to give you all the grace that you need to perform all the good works you need to perform. Now, do good works get you to heaven? No. But because you're on your way to heaven, should we do good works? Yes. You know, we, 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 we sometimes, as Baptists, get a little bit scared. For example, because charismatics have taken the Holy Spirit and have misused the gifts of the Spirit and have misused this thing of, of, of the Holy, of, you know, the Holy Spirit and all that. Now as Baptists, what we are is we're afraid to talk about the Holy Spirit. And I'm going to tell you, the Holy Spirit fills us. He equips us. 
He, I mean, we can be excited about serving God. All the things that the Holy Spirit, we shouldn't be excited. If the Bible teaches it, I don't care if somebody else takes and twists it the wrong way. That's their problem. What I'm supposed to do is take the word of God and do what God tells me to do with it. And the same way with this thing of good work. We're so afraid to talk about good works because we don't want to be labeled a good work salvation. You know, these people say, well, if your good works outweigh your bad works, then that means I'm going to get to go to heaven. We're not talking about heaven and hell for our good works. We're talking about now that I'm saved, I've been bought by the blood of Jesus Christ, and because of his grace, I am what I am, and I'm going to labor for him. And because I'm laboring for him, he commands me to have good works. If you read Titus, the book of Titus, several verses in there, he tells us to maintain good works. And he tells us to have those good works for necessary uses. I'm going to tell you, labor. And, and God is able to make all grace abound toward you, that ye always, having all sufficiency in all things, may abound to every good work. 2 Timothy chapter number 2. Let me read this verse for you. 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse number 1. The Bible says, <clears throat> 2 Timothy 2, 1, he says, Thou therefore, my son, of course, Apostle Paul talking to his son in the Lord Timothy, he says in 2 Timothy 2, 1, he says, Thou therefore, my son, be strong in the what? Grace that is in Christ Jesus. You know, why doesn't he say, be strong in the flesh? Why doesn't he say, be strong in the faith? Why doesn't he say, be strong in the, and you fill in the blank. It's not an accident that God had him write, be strong in the grace. Because I'm going to tell you, when he says this, he goes on and he begins to tell him, you need to teach others and teach good men and, and they can teach others also. But he says in verse 3, thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier. He's telling him he needs to be a good soldier for the Lord. This life that we're living is a battle. And I'm going to tell you that we need to be strong in the grace of God. Everything in this life can take your joy away. If you're trusting in a job for your joy, what if you lose your job? If you're trusting in a retirement, what if you lose your money? If you're trusting in that new vehicle to bring joy, what happens the first time the kids put a scratch on it? You know, what, what, what if, you know, you understand what I'm saying? If, you're, if your joy is coming from your children, what if one gets a sickness and dies? What if, are you trusting that your joy is from your parents? Well, what happens when they, when they get old and pass away? See, things of this earth can rob you of joy if your joy is based upon things of this earth. I'm not saying that children can't bring joy and parents can't bring joy. I'm not saying that you can't have a good job that you enjoy. I'm not saying those things. But if your joy is based upon that, what happens when it's gone? I've met people that their whole life was wrapped in their wife, and then when their wife died, they quit living. I've met ladies that, that their whole life was so wrapped around their husband that when the husband died, all of a sudden they, they quit God. And I'm thinking, I understand loving a spouse that much, but you're going to quit God? So our joy needs to be something deeper than just what we have on the outside. So true joy is going to come from God. And when you put your joy into the grace of God and salvation, listen, nobody's going to be able to take that away from you. And when you get into this passage of Scripture and he says, be strong in the grace of God, when you begin to endure hardness and you begin to go through the things of this life and face different things and they get called names because of how you live and made fun of and you're the, like the black sheep of the family because, man, why don't you ever do this and do that anymore with the other family member? You know what I'm talking about. And all of a sudden, all those things happen. Be strong in the grace. Because God's grace doesn't change. God's grace doesn't show favoritism. God's grace doesn't just appear one day and gone the next day. It's God's grace. So he says in back in, in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, he says, by the grace of God, I am what I am. And he said, because of his grace, he says, I labored more abundantly. You and I need to labor for God. Look over in Hebrews chapter number 12 and verse number 28. Let me read this verse for you. In Hebrews 12 and verse number 28, 
The Bible says this, Wherefore, we receiving a kingdom which cannot be moved, let us have grace whereby we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. You know what he says here? He says we have grace, and you know what he's going to help us do? To serve God acceptably. That's God's grace. That is God's grace. So by the grace of God, I am what I am. You are who you are because of God's grace. You're laboring more abundantly because of God's grace. But can I just add this? Apostle Paul says in 1 Corinthians 10 and verse, or 15 and verse number 10, he says, By the grace of God I am what I am, and his grace which was told to me was not in vain, but I labored more abundantly than all. Now listen to these next three, three words. Yet not I. He says, I am what I am by the grace of God. Because of God's grace, you know what I've done? I've labored more abundantly. But you know what he also says at the end? It's not really me. Yet not I. You know, when you got saved, it wasn't anything you could do, right? It was all the grace of God. Okay. Now that you're serving him, let's not get too puffed up because it's not really anything you're doing. The fact is, one labors and other waters, but God's the one that gives the increase. You know, if your job is to be the one that plants, then plant. If your job is the one to water, then water. But don't get all puffed up about planting. Well, if it wasn't for me, there wouldn't have been a seed in the ground. Well, if it wasn't for me, then there wouldn't have been any moisture on that seed. You all know what I, where we're coming with this? I mean, we get proud and haughty about these things. And we need to remember that you're just a tool in God's hands, and God's going to use you how he wants to use you, and when he's done using you, he still gets the glory. So Paul says, yes, I labored more, than, more abundantly than all of them, but it's not me. It's not me. It's not me. So he says there, yet not I, but the grace of God which was with me. The reason that I am what I am is by the grace of God. But the reason that I am laboring more abundantly is because of the grace of God that was with me. 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse number 9. Let's read that verse. 2 Corinthians 12, 9 says this. And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Isn't that amazing? Apostle Paul three times asked God, I got this thorn in the flesh. I need for you to please take it away. He felt like if this was gone, I could serve God better. You know what? God didn't take it away. What God did was, he says, my grace is sufficient for thee. I was talking to Brother Houston and I last night. I'm thinking, man, you're like, he was talking about the grace of God. I'm like, you're talking all through my whole sermon here. It was amazing. And then Brother West led a uh, wonderful grace of Jesus. I thought, you see how God put this together? Brother Houston didn't know I was preaching on grace. Brother West didn't know I was preaching on grace. But yet our conversation last night, our conversation out there, and the song that was sing, see how God does things? It's not me. It's not you. That's God doing that. So you sit there and you look at these things. He says, my grace is sufficient for thee. So what? I don't want to go through that. I don't blame you. I wouldn't want to go through some things either. Paul says, I want that thorn gone. Whatever the thorn was, we can argue about that later. Whatever it was, he says, I want it to be gone. And God just says this, my grace is sufficient for thee. And you know why God allows us sometimes to have that thorn? He takes the strength away so that he gets the credit. Because does he not say, my grace is sufficient for thee? For my strength is made perfect in weakness. Here's what would happen. Look what I did. Look what I did. And if that's not true, why would God have to say, for by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Why does God have to put that in his word if we think we wouldn't take the credit for it? If I could work my way to heaven, you know I'd be shining that badge all eternity. 
Look how I got here. Yeah, that's me right there. And God said, that's not going to happen in heaven. Why do we think then it's going to be different with our service? The reason we can serve God in labor is because of His grace. Look over, uh, did we read 2 Timothy 2.1 already? Let's look in sec- Revelation 22.21. Revelation 22.21. While you're turning there, let me read this verse one more time. But by the grace of God, I am what I am. And His grace which was below- bestowed upon me was not in vain. But I labored more abundantly than they all. Yet not I, but the grace of God which was with me. I find it amazing that the very last phrase, verse, however you want to say it, in the Bible says this. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. Out of all the things that can be said is the very last thing. You know what's said? God's grace. If you're here today, it's because of God's grace. If you're serving God today, it's because of God's grace. You know, if you're here this morning and you don't know Christ as your Savior, you know how you can get that settled? By the grace of God. By the grace of God. Let's all stand with heads bowed and eyes.